So day two started uh, about 6 a.m. I hit the water station and filled up pretty much every container I have with me, as much water as I could fit in it, and then hit the highway. Problem is, um, Death Valley's Badwater Basin is actually, if I'm not mistaken, the lowest point elevation in North America. So it's no surprise that every way out of here is an elevation gain. It's not bad, but the road leaving here um, is an incline. So even even with as much water as I could keep in it, which isn't much because apparently the crack's worse than I thought it was in my radiator, it just pours right out of it. So I just can't keep water in it. And if I keep trying to push it like this, I'm gonna end up blowing the engine and then I'm really gonna be hurting. So instead, um, because of the amazing people I know, I would manage to call for a buddy to come graciously back up and drive eight hours here with parts to fix my car. So. <laughs> In the meantime, um, I'm staying at camp where I have cell coverage and uh, everything I need. So it sucks, I won't get any photography done today, except for maybe I might wander out and kind of see behind me. There's it's mostly desert terrain, but I might be able to wander away from camp a little bit and find something to set up and shoot, but I don't expect to get anywhere for sunrise or sunset um, until my car's fixed later tonight. So for now, I'm just gonna hang out at camp, see what I can do to occupy my time and uh, maybe shop for a new car, so. So, if, uh, find yourself camping around the Furnace Creek area in Death Valley, uh, you might want to be aware that there is what I would consider to be a sizable population of snakes, apparently. Uh, most people clear out during the day and go do their adventure stuff, but uh, me hanging back here, I can see them dashing from tree to tree and shady spot to shady spot. Yeah, so I made myself a shade out of my rain fly in my tent. I was just sitting chilling and I don't think he saw me until he got up close, but right about there, one come running out of that bush and just come running straight up next to my chair. I think he startled me more than I startled him, but um, they appear to be red racers or coach whips, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not venomous, but I've heard that they can be aggressive, so you don't really want to mess with them. Not that I would want to anyway, but uh, yeah, keep your tent zipped up. So admittedly, this has been a pretty miserable video journal, photography-wise. Um, it's supposed to be all about going and taking images and process of finding them, and um, instead it's basically been about me with a busted car. So, apologize for that. Um, at this point, um, I have yet to even take my camera out of the bag, so, I mean, I have this one, but that's not really what I consider my camera. I have a Mark IV in the bag that I haven't even turned on, so, um, at this point, I don't even know if I'm coming away from this trip with any images at all. Um, I hope so, and if I do, I'll share them. But, more than the images, um, granted that's important, that's why we're even here, um, but more than that, um, I keep the camera rolling, though, because... All the people I watch, the ones that I'm drawn to to watch all the time on a consistent basis, um, there's always a story behind the photo. Um, the photos are important, but m deeper than that is the story that goes along with it. And there's almost always a story, so that's kind of what I'm trying to capture. And even though um, it hasn't been a very fun story, um, it has been an adventure. So should I happen to come away from this with any images at all, um, they'll have a hell of a story behind them. So, sounds like Alan's not gonna get here until after sunset, um, and that's all right. 
so I won't, I don't expect to have transportation to be able to get on location anywhere that I had planned for sundown. But uh, the good thing is I am not that far from being able to trek away from my campsite into a clearing a little bit. So I might wait until the sun goes down a little bit because when it's high as it is right now, it's pretty intense. Um, so once it gets lower in the sky and the light starts to get good, I might just grab my camera bag and walk out away from camp, um, anywhere I can get a good vantage point basically, and try to capture like the last fleeting light or something on the mountain tops. Could be cool. The, um, the mountains here run north to south, so uh, fortunately you can shoot both golden hours. Um, you can shoot one direction in the morning and then flip around and shoot the other direction at night. So lots of opportunities still if I want to take it. I'm just going to have to walk to get it. So. That might still happen. We'll see if I can get something there. Um, if not, later tonight we'll have two cars here, so pretty likely that we'll be able to go get something for morning. Um, and then I'll have Valen with me too with his camera, so company even, that'll be nice. I did find something pretty cool. It's just a wide open spot with, uh, unfortunately there's no foreground interest, but it's just this big, vast open area. Gives me a really nice unimpeded view of the mountains on both sides um, because I'm not really sure what I'm working with here. So last night, uh, while I was sitting on the side of the road waiting for my car to cool down, right about on those mountains, I climbed, they're right on the side of the road. So I climb up the side of that and just kind of give myself an overlook and watch the sun go down from there. Um, I just wanted to watch and see what the light did. And based on that, I can tell you that I know that the mountain this is gonna blow out, but this mountain right behind me is going to get some pretty gorgeous light rays down and once that sun gets down closer to the, to the peak of it. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a very long lens with me. My 24 to 70 may or may not be able to get any real detail out of that, uh, but uh, that is one potential I could try. Uh, otherwise, the main big backup plan is this guy. Looks pretty small in this lens since it's such a wide angle, but what I'm hoping for is that we'll get some pretty gorgeous light on it as the sun gets lower, potentially as it ducks down behind the other mountain range, possibly even a little bit of earth shadow on it that can make it look really neat. So that's what we're working with. Um, we'll see what happens. So it looks like the shot with the mountains to the west here with the light rays on them might actually be okay. I wish my lens I had with me was just a slight bit longer so I could get in just a hair tighter. But at 70 mil, I'm able to get pretty much what I wanted in the composition. I got the camera set up on the tripod. Finally, woo, just looking through the viewfinder trying to settle on a composition right now. But um, light's starting to get good. I'm gonna hold out just a little bit longer because based on what I saw last night, I got a feeling it might get just a little bit better. Almost thought about doing a pano shot. But the problem is, um, I'm kind of getting greedy here and hoping to maybe get two shots in one. So what's going to happen is I'm going to shoot this and then I'm going to immediately spin my camera around and wait for the light to get good back here. And when I do that, I can't really rely on my tripod being perfectly level. I'm just not going to get that ambitious, you know, especially considering the way the weekend's gone. I'm just going to try to get these two shots and call it good. I think that's already pushing it. So the light got pretty good and I went ahead and took a couple shots actually. Shot it at f11, um, shutter speed around 250 I believe, ISO 100. Um, and I think that is first shot in the bag. I'm gonna sit and watch it for a minute, make sure it doesn't get even better. But yeah, feels good to actually take a shot. So yeah, maybe the funk's over with and everything else is just smooth rolling from here. So I got that shot too. Um, it's not any light left on it now, but that whole thing lit up with nice gorgeous light right up to the sun. 
dip below the other mountain range here to the west. So it was just the peaks of it that were getting hit, just kissed by this nice sunset color. It's really, really pretty. I did attempt a panel shot, but I don't expect it to turn out. Um, I didn't have time to really truly level my tripod. I don't know what to expect with it. Though, um, as it turns out, the best shot, there was a third one. Uh, I didn't get any video of it because man, I had to work fast. But there was another shot facing the south, um, with the mountain peak that had just gorgeously lit up um, with a couple of bushes in the foreground that uh, that had to work way fast. Like by the time I got uh, the foreground shot in, I got the far shot with the mountain in focus. Went to focus stack for mid ground and I was already losing my light. And by the time I got the foreground, it was gone. It was that fast. So I don't know what to expect, whether or not it actually turned out. Um, I won't know. You guys will know before I do since uh, you'll be seeing this video. Um, but if it did, that'd be great. Um, I don't expect a bonus shot, but I hope it turned out. I don't expect that I shot it in the best light um, just because I had to work so fast. I, I don't know what to expect. So we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna make the trek back to the campground now. Um, Alan should be pulling in any time now, so it's gonna hike the about a mile and a half or so that I left my campground and uh, enjoy the sky because it's starting to turn pink and uh, it's really pretty. Check it out. Right there. A little hard to see on this lens, but trust me, it's pretty. So, with any luck, uh, I'll see you in the morning and we're, uh, we'll be at bad water or hopefully bad water. Made it to bad water, finally. And we're gonna go fix my car and then get out of here, so.